Can you tell me the story of a, a soldier, a brave soldier who died in Afghanistan called Conrad Lewis and his dog Peg? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was back in 2011. Um, I received a phone call. Um, turned out the guy was called Tony, uh, Conrad's father. And um, he said to me, oh, my son's been looking after this dog out in the uh, area they were in, in Helmand province. Um, and he said, you know, that we want to know, can we get this uh, dog back? Um, and I said, well, yeah, sure. No, it shouldn't be a problem. You yeah, know, we'd rescued quite a few dogs from Helmand by then as a charity. Um, and I said, just, you know, I need to have contact with your son, though. I said, it's great talking to you, but I need to have contact with your son so we can actually, you know, make this possible. And that's when Tony told me that his son had actually been killed in action just two weeks earlier. Um, and it was just obviously the guys of that regiment. It was actually the parachute regiment who were looking after this little dog called Peg. Um, you know, obviously I choked up on the phone and I made a promise there and then to him to get the dog out. Um, not knowing whether I could actually do that. Um, and in the end, we had the dog smuggled in the back of a Chinook helicopter. Um, the guys just popped the dog down inside their uh, combat jacket, ran up the back ramp. That dog, little dog was taken to Camp Bastion. And from there, they used the same trick again to get the dog up to uh, Kabul. Um, and that's where we had Peg into our uh, shelter and obviously went for the vaccinations and the proper procedures to then get Peg obviously into the UK um, yeah and I'm so happy still to this day when I talk to Tony I can hear little Peg in the background uh, barking away well uh, I've got someone on the line you know what journalists are like they're pretty sneaky they like to spring surprises <laughs> I've got someone on the line who wants to say thank you to you uh, is uh, Mr Tony Lewis there please <laughs> Yeah, I am indeed. Uh, there you go. <laughs> There's Pem Farthing. Uh, I think you owe him a, a debt of gratitude. Tell, tell us, how is Peg, by the way? I know he's not with you at the moment, but uh, tell us. No, uh, Peg's fabulous, thank you. And and thank you, Pen. You, you know how grateful we are um, for that. Um, Peg's fabulous. She's now uh, 12, nearly 13 years old. She's got uh, a lot of grey hair, uh, a grey face. She doesn't look like that anymore. Um, but she's in uh, she's in great she's in great condition. Um, she's still a guardian of the household, leader of the household. Um, yeah, she keeps a good two hundred meter perimeter pen. That's for sure. But very special. <laughs> but very special for you, Tony. I would have thought because uh, you know Peg is a, a sort of tribute and a reminder of your brave son. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, um, Conrad came home at Christmas. He'd got lots of stories about uh, about Peggy. Got lots of pictures of her as well. And um, sorry, that, that shot's bad. Um, and he uh, he got us to make a promise to bring her back. You know, and effectively that was our job. He was out there fighting the Taliban and doing his thing. And he just said, "Look, you know, this. Uh, I've heard of a I've heard of a guy who gets uh, gets the animals back. So um, let's try and do that." Obviously, uh, once Conrad had been tragically killed, uh, we thought about that and what we could do to uh, to honour his wishes. And by sheer chance, uh, two weeks after he died, we we got to know Penn's details. He'd been given a lecture in uh, in a dog's trust venue, and I got in touch. And as you heard, uh, Penn and I had the conversation. It's a fantastic story, and uh, because of it, you've set up a charity called 353, uh, which was Comrade's number. Uh, was he the 353rd to person to die in Afghanistan? Uh, and you've worked with Penn. Uh, Penn, tell us about 353 and how they've helped you. Well, I was going to say, when you, you said about Tony thanking me, I mean, it's us who needs to thank Tony's wife, Sandy. Um, their 353 charity has just been unbelievable in the amount of money they've raised for military charities. Um, I honestly don't know how the two of them do it. Um, but they've helped fund um, our intern program at Nowzad. So young Afghan vets coming through to actually be the future generations, you know, out there fighting rabies, you know, out in the streets, out in the provinces. And 353 have been paramount in helping us do that work and so much so that actually our clinic wasn't called the Nauzad clinic it was called the Nauzad private conrad lewis clinic um yeah and that was a huge honor you know the day that we put the plaque up at our clinic you know with conrad lewis's name on it um you know and for us you know the last few years all those vets who have come through you know that's been one of the legacies from conrad you know not only was he here and obviously providing security in afghanistan but also this legacy of his will live on 
you know, in whatever form now Zad now takes, because, you know, we're going to take that name with us. We're not just leaving it behind. Well, explain, uh, Penn, if you can, uh, about the special, because, of course, your story really dates back to when you uh, you formed a friendship with a local dog that you called Nowzad. Uh, so it's a very much reflective of Conrad's story. Tell us why, you know, soldiers there, and you've also repatriated lots of dogs uh, to the, 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 the soldiers that knew them in Afghanistan. What's so special about these dogs to soldiers? Why, why do these relationships form? What did it mean to you? For me, I mean, it was just the normality. You know, we had this craziness going on around us. You know, the Taliban hit us every single day, uh, whether it be with mortars or small arms fire back then. Um, you know, and just being with this dog was just this little bit of normality. I always said, now Zab was like my magic carpet. You know, I used to just sit with him and I was just whisked away to somewhere else for five or ten minutes. And I wasn't in that just chaotic you know, desperate situation of basically a, a fight that was just never ending. Um, and so for me, you know, I, I understand people come home from work, you know, everyday work from the office, they're stressed out. They take the dog for a walk, yeah. they chill out. Life is back to normal again. And that was the same for me. And I'm saying for every soldier who's ever rescued one of these dogs or a cat, mm. it's just that five, 10 minutes of normality. They're just with that animal and the animal's showing them friendship. They're showing the animal friendship. And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Uh, Tony, uh, can you just quickly tell us, we know quite full well what Penn thinks ab about the Americans and their sudden withdrawal and the abandonment <laughs> of Afghanistan. Uh, what, did, what did you think about it? What do you think about uh, what Penn had to do, uh, which was caused, of course, by basically the West abandoning that forlorn country? Yeah, I think, first of all, a shocking abandonment of everything that had been achieved for 20 years. I mean, this is the largest ungoverned space on earth into which people can choose to do whatever they wish to do. And for 20 years, we'd managed to give these people hope, hope that was personified by what Penn was doing with Nowzad. You know, that, that was actually, for me, the greatest symbol of change in Afghanistan and what our soldiers had achieved for 20 years. And the ability to see, you know, female Afghan graduate vets working in his practice, looking after soldiers' dogs that were then being adopted by not only uh, soldiers abroad, but by uh, Afghan people. And, you know, there were some absolutely fabulous people out there. And that's why, you know, the project still to get Penn staff back is is paramount. Um, you know, it's a, for me, it's just further vindication of what our guys did. If we can have a, a final victory, which we seem to have lost uh, so easily in these last few months. Well said. Uh, Penn, it was amazing that you got the dogs and the cats back. Uh, uh, but as uh, Tony just mentioned, uh, I assume you're still, uh, you probably don't want to go into too many details because the situation's fragile, but uh, I assume you're still working round the clock to try and get your staff uh, and their families out of Kabul. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we haven't had a celebration yet that I'm back or the dogs and cats are back. Um, that's, that's on hold. You know, the team that we had, which is absolutely an amazing team, they're still on full time 24 seven and we're working on plans to get the staff out um, as best we can and we're not going to stop until that happens you know the mission was always operation art was people and animals um, so we've got halfway there but we haven't finished it yet so we're going to keep going until we do until we get our people safely out uh, tell us your feelings when that plane had to take off uh, without your staff without their families uh, pretty much full of animals but empty of people. I mean, there was something kind of just tragic about that. It was it was just desperate, Kevin, to be totally honest. Um, I had him into that airport, and obviously they were turned away at gunpoint due to paperwork. Um, and you just, you just got to think about that. Everything we went through to get into that airport, and they got turned away by the Taliban because of paperwork. Um, you know, and as Tony said, this is now, you know, one of the most ungoverned spaces in, in the world. Yeah, our team were turned away because of the paperwork wasn't correct. Um, Beggar's belief, doesn't it? Beggar's belief, there. doesn't it? Beggar's belief. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. I was just sat on that flight and I said there was no joy. There was no you know, happiness. It was just, right, what do we do next? How are we going to get these people out? When can I get back onto you know, data so we can get in touch with the team to start you know, carrying on that work? It was 
and we haven't stopped, like I said, and we're not going to stop till we get them out. Uh, are, are they okay at the moment? Presumably you're in touch. Yeah, we speak. We speak every day. Um, tonight, um, apparently, Kabul's erupted in gunfire tonight because apparently the Taliban have now um, basically assigned a new president to the country. Um, so they sent me loads of videos of all the gunfire that's going off this evening. Uh, but the staff are terrified. They are absolutely terrified of obviously what is now about to come in the coming days. Um, and there's nothing I can say. I keep telling the, you know, the, the team back here working so hard, but yeah, you know, it's just my words. Um, so I need to prove it to them when we actually get them out safe. Well, I think if anybody's going to get them out, you will. Uh, are you uh, in quarantine at the moment, mate? Um, I am, yeah, I'm in Norway, so I'm... Um, uh, I've did, done three days of quarantine, PCR tested out into home quarantine now. Right. So I'm with my wife, finally. Um, so we're in our, our home here in uh, Oslo. Um, and then as soon as I can, then I'll be on a flight getting back to London um, so we can get stuck back into, obviously, the rest of it actually being in the right place. But just a final thought, really, Penn. Uh, we're just running out of time. Thanks so much for joining us. And once again, you know, you are a hero and uh, the people of this country are right behind you all of our listeners are uh, don't worry about what the papers did over the weekend it was, I, was, I just thought it was extraordinary and it didn't work it didn't work and by the way uh, if I was on that runway uh, talking to that guy from the MOD my language would have been a lot worse than yours so again I wouldn't <laughs> even you, I Karen, wouldn't even that. I wouldn't even think about that uh, <laughs> just a final word just reflect on this past extraordinary two and a half weeks. I mean, could you possibly imagine uh, what has unfolded? Not for one minute did I ever think that this would have happened. And then, you know, when I have just sat down and just briefly looked back on it, I do start kind of shaking a little bit. Um, and I get very, very emotional because it, you know, just everything the staff went through just to be turned away. And like I said, now it's still full on I think adrenaline focus you know we're still not sleeping we're, we're up all night meetings and making phone calls so yeah when it's over then then I can stop and I think about it but right now it's just terrifying to think of the prospect of what they're going to have to live through if we can't get them out well as I say if anyone's going to get them out you'll get them out I know that uh last uh, point for both of you really uh give us uh, the uh, I don't know where uh, website addresses links or wherever so people can donate to both of your charities uh, well for nowzad it's www.nowzad.com um, and obviously any funds raised go into um, obviously the rehabilitation of the staff once they get out of afghanistan um, you know resettle them here in the uk so we don't take money away from the taxpayer um, and also the ongoing costs now with our dogs and cats that did safely make it so getting them obviously through quarantine, et cetera. And I'll hand over to Tony for obviously 353, which is an amazing charity, yeah, um, doing a heck of a lot of good. Tony, uh, your chance now to uh, deliver a uh, link or a, uh, what's the website address so people can donate? Yeah, it's www.353.org.uk. Just one thing, Kevin, if I may, just to please, add, you mentioned, the you mentioned the papers at the weekend. Um, what desperate irony that the Afghan team told Penn to save himself and the animals and then the UK press or certain sections of it and certain ministers chose to uh, actually take that as something that they considered offensive. Yeah. You know, one, na one nation's trying to help and I, I, I found that disastrously ironic. And the the the, uh, the great thing about it, though, it was a, it was we know what went on. There was a, a kind of feeble attempt to smear Penn's name, and boy, oh boy, it did not work. It seriously didn't Absolutely. work. If anything, uh, people loved you even more. Uh, Penn, once again, congratulations, mate. You are a hero, and I know you'll get your people out. Thanks so much for joining us.